speed. Old Trafford once again. Yeah. Oh. Feels like the good old days, doesn't it? Well, it's, we, we knew that if we just stuck to our game plan and, and we were very resilient through what we did on the field, we knew we could we could grind, eventually grind Catalan down. Mm. They've had a really difficult task and all credit to them for what they've done for the last three weeks, you know. But we knew if we just stuck in there and kicked the ball long and chased hard and made our tackles and we knew we'd get the we'd get the results in the end. So it was it was basically no panic was the message there early on. No, I thought we we started a little bit nervous, mm. you know. But all week we've trained really well and the atmosphere in the dressing room uh, I felt like pulling the kit on myself, you know, it was <laughs> It was brilliant. Um, the atmosphere was great, and the players were really, really wanting it. You know, and we're losing the amount of players that we're losing at the end of the year. It makes it all that bit more special for for people. Manage try the the key, the, the the key moment. Yeah, I think there's a lot of pivotal moments. You know, I think there was. Uh, for for me, defensively, they were great. I mean, probably the front up stuff was Catalan on a good side and. We scrambled so well, yet again. James Roby is just, uh, he's, he's superhuman and for what the work that he does and we see him tracking back to save tries when he doesn't really need to do it, you know, but he cares about the club and he cares about the team. Did <laughs> Gregor lose a few young lads in there? Um, well, that's, we've always had that thing at this club where, you know, we've, we've always had good young kids coming through and I asked that I've came through when I was 17 and, mm. you know, it's the old theory of you, if you're good enough, it doesn't matter about your age and, them kids are the future of the club, you know. Both of them have got massive careers ahead of them and they're probably future internationals in, in my eyes anyway, because they're just going to get better and better and better. Well, I mean, Robbie got booked quite late on, didn't he? And that's just, is it not a temptation with the big games to wrap them in cotton wool and give them a rest for next week? Maybe? Yeah, do, do you know what? He does. I mean, you speak to him before the game, he's such a laid back person. You speak to him before the game and everybody else is a bit hyped up and, and he's just so, you know, he's virtually laid down and, you know, that's just <laughs> Rob's personality. He's, I think we've run out of subs as well, to be fair, after oh, he got the whack, so <laughs> he's, I thought it'd be a little bit disrespectful to, to blame the 12 men for the back end of the game, but uh, yeah. you've always got that mentality to pull him off, but he's probably disappointed if he did that. Not the outside right. you can't read, but you hope to keep it up then, anywhere near Old Trafford. No, I mean, I was just saying upstairs that for us the real pivotal point was, was the whole game, after we'd lost Luke Walsh and... And I, I hold my hands up and I said it to the players in the dressing room, you know, it's, I was a little bit negative after that. Um, sort of, I had the whole, the, the, my heart sunk when he, when he was laying that stretcher coming off the field and, and you sort of feel that the dream's over. Um, but for us as coaches, we got our heads together on the, on the Saturday morning and we come up with this great master plan that was uh, going to make or break us, I believe. And, and just working with a group of players that we work with, enabled us to, to do what we did and you know to bring Jordan Turner in and to put people in different positions they all bought into it and they had belief and as each week went on we could show them video and say well this is working and this is working and, and to get the victory of Cass at home and you know that's for me that was a stamp on it that was like we believe that this works you know so and we're there we're, we're, we dance now you know and the boys deserve everything they get it's a beautiful game Kieran next week are you looking at Wigan or Warrington or uh, uh, who knows? I mean, Warrington are in, in great form and they know how to win big games and Wigan are a great side coming up. If you look at the last performance they've played, and, you know, I've been speaking to Wayne all week and he's, he's pumped about it, you know, as, as, as his players are up and they're really looking forward to it. So it's always good playing, getting the results and sitting back and watching two teams just not the stuffing out of each other. You know, it's, uh, it's good. Um, you can be a little bit of a spectator before I've got to put my coach's hat on the next day. Just the, you mentioned the young ones there. It's changed a lot the team since all the other grand final defeats. Will that help you then? Because you know, five defeats in the bounce could lose a bit of baggage, couldn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's that's it. that's sort of history. You know, you can look at all the Challenge Cup wins that we had in the row, and <coughs> it doesn't entitle you to to win the Challenge Cup the year after, does it? You know, just because we've lost ten games in the past, it's that's by the by. Um, the bet that if we win the game or we lose the game, for me, doesn't. I'd love to win it. Don't get me wrong, but the best process for me is for this group of players of young children and young children and <laughs> 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 young kids coming through in the squad what we've got to, to finish first and to, to even make a grand final is what is what the make that's the building blocks of the future of the club. Um, 
people always say, how do you win big games? You know, how do you, how do you, how do you win grand finals? How do you win league leaders? How do you do these things? And you've actually got to do it. You've got to be part of it. And, you know, I won a trophy when I was a young, I, I was only, I think it was 17, 18, when I won my first trophy. And you, you just get used to it. You know what you know what to do to win the big games. And for me, doing what we've done this year against all of us and, and making a grand final with, with, with the squad that we've got, you know, it's, I'm a proudest punch for the boys. And I know what it, what it means to the club and I know what it's going to do for the club going forward. Now you're there, would you count more on your experiences winning grand finals or losing grand finals when you prepare this lot for, for it? No, it's just nothing. It's just you just prepare for the game. You know, there's no preparing for a... I'll just prepare for 80,000 screaming fans and you know, that feeling when you walk down that tunnel and it feels like the fireworks just gone off in your ear. You know, it's, the group of brothers screaming, you just can't prepare for that. That's, it's all about pressure. And the way we've been playing over the past few weeks, it's, it suits... It suits the playoffs, it suits how we've got to play in the playoffs and hopefully we carry that confidence in going forward. Just truthfully, when you moved Mark Flanagan to seven, did you did you think it would work as well as it has done for you? He's been, if you watch him in training, he's been an absolute super, he's the ultimate professional in training and you watch what he does and he's a great ball player. He's just, he's never really had the opportunity, but he just plays in the 13 now in the back row. And he's just filling a spot for us, he's playing like a back row, but he's filling a spot for us down that side of the field and he's done a great job. He's done a, He's never going to be a Joey Johns or a, or a Luke Walsh, but he's done for what his role, what we want him to do. He's done an absolute super job, as has Jordan Turner, as has Lance. You know, all these players in these positions that if other clubs probably tried to do it, maybe they'd fall down a little bit. But you know, it's all credit to the players. They've really bought into it and they want to do well. You know, it's the easiest the easiest option to take is to lie down and be defeated. You know, it's, it's, <coughs> there's a thousand excuses out there why why we can't do well this season. You know, we've, we've lost our three best players who support well who would be three of the best players in the competition you know and that's a lot of sides would take that excuse and would lie down and say well thanks very much we'll see you next year but these boys have stood up and that's that's what I'm saying that's for us going forward that's for me that's the proudest thing for me as a, as a coach of this club that going forward I know that you know special things can, can happen at this club because of the injuries you've had this season, what version of the playbook are we on at the minute? Two or three? Have you had to rip it to two or three? Or? Or we keep changing the playbook every <laughs> week, I'm not sure. I'm not seriously, we've had three different playbooks now. No, we just we just go out there and do it. You know, it's, we, we got used to, we, there was a period in the, in the competition where we got used to losing two or three players a week. But you, you can't cry about it. Everybody else goes through that situation. you just got to do the best you can. No word on the soil or what the injury. No, it's, it seemed fine to me. It didn't seem like he was late and he's, he wrapped his arms around him. There's no shoulder. There's no shoulder involved. Fingers crossed. Cheers, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.